What's going on everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news and today's guest just defeated Connor Matthews on Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, he won that fight by unanimous decision, impressed Dana White so much that he gave this guy a UFC contract. Pleased today to be joined by one of the newest fighters on the UFC roster, Francis Marshall. Francis, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. And congratulations, man. I'm sure you've got to be uh, extremely happy with yourself that you uh, accomplished this goal of finally getting to the UFC. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, it's obviously been uh, one of my goals for a long time. So it's finally good to come to see it come come true. So has it sunk in yet? Like, have you like, you know, has it, has it all come to realization? Like, man, I, I did this. I'm in the UFC. No, not, I, I mean, a little bit, but but not really yet. I, I think uh, more after I get my first fight booked and my first get in there for my first fight, it'll probably sink in a little more. It's still like uh, a little, it's still new and a little weird thinking about it. I bet. I know it's all new territory for you. And uh, let's kind of start telling everybody about how this whole entire thing came through here. So before we actually get into the X's and O's of this fight, Let's back up to, there was this whole big thing, right, with Dana White. So the week before you guys fought, only one guy got a con uh, uh, contract. That was Joe Pfeiffer. And Dana came out and he was like, everyone, be Joe Pfeiffer. Well, then you guys, before your fight, had a meeting with Dana White, right? He called you guys all in and he gave you guys a big pep talk before you went out there and fight. Not too much more details after that, though. What was Dana's message to you guys back in the locker room? Um, it really, it wasn't much, it wasn't, um, he wasn't like yelling at us or anything. He was, uh, he was just saying like, we all know why we're here. Uh, kind of don't be like last week, just go out there and perform. Like he, he wasn't telling us to throw caution under the wind or nothing like that. He, he wasn't saying be stupid and, and go crazy. He was just, you know why you're here, uh, put on an exciting show and, and, uh, make your performance count basically all in, uh different words but that's basically what the message was yeah and you guys answered the bell out of that too because uh, all five fighters on your episode that was uh the second week of this season all five of you guys all ended up getting a contract five great performances and let's talk about your performance now so opening round a lot of action right high pace fight you guys come out you guys are really getting after it and obviously you won the round but i would say that's probably connor's probably best round of the fight he was able to land some shots too just kind of uh, just talk about it, too, because you guys really went after it from the time the referee said go. Yeah, so starting out, it was kind of just we got in and got right after it. It was like once once we started, there was really no feeling out process. Like uh, Connor came out right away, started throwing. So, I mean, there's really no, after that, there's no choice but to just bite down and, and start throwing back. You know, we can't have a feeling out process. And I don't know, we kind of just got into it. It was a good round. It was a tough round. Um but then going back into the corner, into the second round, I, I felt pretty good and pretty confident. Yeah, let's talk about that second round because that was when you really were able to show off your skills then. Like you had the gas tank. He kind of was starting to fade a little bit. Uh, you were able to really mix in the wrestling there, show your stand-up skills. Just, just talk about that round and how you were able to kind of piece everything together because it seemed like you really kind of found your groove in that round. Yes, yeah, so that round, I, I kind of, um, I think I took him down twice in the round. It kind of, I had a lot of control during that round. So going in, my cardio felt better. I could see him starting to get a little little winded. And then I think the shots were kind of taking a little bit of an effect on him. Um, but, I mean, he was just a super tough opponent to have. Like, he, he just kept coming at me. So uh, I was able to work some takedowns, hold him down for a good amount of time, uh, land some elbows on the ground, some strikes on the ground, and then uh, win that round uh, pretty handedly and then move into the third. <laughs> And then in the third round, it's funny, right before uh, your fight too, we had did an interview in which I asked you the question, would you look to go for a finish just because kind of Dana likes to see that on the contender series a lot of times. And you said, you're like, if it's there, it's there. But if not, I'm just focused on going out and showing off my skills and getting the win. And third round, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what you did. You know, you, you obviously didn't get the finish. You won by decision. That round, though, I mean, you, you fought smart. You, you dominated the round. You took care of business. Just kind of talk about that round and what you kind of saw in it and, and what kind of led to you not, you know, overdoing it, trying to get a, a finish when something wasn't there. Yeah, so that round, I mean, um, it was like all on the feet. So we stayed standing pretty much the whole round, I think. And uh, I kind of just went into it. If a takedown was open, I was going to take it and then – just try to work on the ground, maybe work a finish from there. But I was having a lot of success on my feet. 
So I kind of wanted to stay there, uh, stick with some boxing. He, I mean, he hit me a couple times in the third round with some good shots, but I think I was able to outwork him in the third, land some more strikes. And my corner was yelling for the takedown, for the takedown for probably the second half of that third round, just to try to, I guess, not play it safe, but look for the finish more on the ground, maybe get him to roll over or finish him with elbows or strikes. But uh, I was having success standing it up, and I was kind of having a little more fun on the feet, so I stayed, uh, st- kept it up. So obviously, right, you go, you get the win, you're happy, you're excited, but then there's the other part of it. You have to get a contract. That's the big part of it here because people have won by decision and not get the contract. Were you at all ever worried as you're seeing all the other fights with all finishes and that? Were you ever worried like, man, he might not give me one after everybody else got a knockout and I didn't? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it went through my head for sure. Uh, just thinking, like, oh, four other finishes on the card. What are the odds he gives out five contracts? Or if he gives out four contracts, what are the odds I get one, the only decision? So uh, part of that played in my head. And then kind of I think he just saw the performance. We had a, a great fight. I mean, he even said it would would have been a good fight on any prelim undercard for a pay-per-view event, which is obviously great to hear coming from Dana White. And um, I think he saw a lot in that fight and what could come in the future. So I think that's able to secure a contract that way. Yeah, that was a great compliment. And the other good compliment too that you got, uh, Michael Bisping, I don't know if you watched the broadcast back from that episode or not, but uh, usually right, I believe it's right before the main event, they have the commentaries come on and uh, say, who do you think's going to get a contract tonight? And Bisping said it, he was, he thought you were a lock for a contract. So obviously you were able to get a, uh, you know, a couple of big compliments there. Just what was it like hearing all those different compliments from Dana White, from Michael Bisping? And what were all those messages that you kind of got from, from the higher ups there with the UFC like that? Um, I mean, it, it's, it definitely feels good. Like hearing stuff from guys that high up, like noticing you as, I mean, just me, a, I'm a small time guy, young kid, only have six fights and, they're noticing something uh, I guess they could see in the future or something good in me where they would think I was able to lock up a contract. So it, it's obviously, it feels good hearing it coming from them because they have so much, uh, not full, but they have so much more experience or, or knowledge about the sport. And how about the reaction then from Kurt and company? So obviously, right, there's a lot going on after you win and then you go and you get the contract and pretty much immediately after Dana gives out the contract, so you guys kind of, line up and do your post-fight interviews when you actually got back to the hotel and were able to kind of just let the moment kind of you know sink in a little bit what was the message from kurt and and everybody when it was all said and done uh he was super happy i mean he was very very excited for the performance he was had a couple of things about what happened in there but really just just happy trying to enjoy the night and um just focusing on what's next and how about the reaction back in uh, New Jersey, too, when you got back? What was that like? Uh, it was nice. I had um, a lot of people reach out. I mean, my phone was blown up with just people congratulating me or uh, congratulating me on the contract as well. So it was uh, good to see all the support back home, too. All right. So now the big question, right? What's next for you? I know you said it's not going to really sink in until you get that first UFC fight. Uh, do you have a plan of when you want to get in there again? I know a couple people on your uh, episode of the Contender Series got some fights booked for October. Any uh, plans of when you want to get back in there? Uh, so I would like to get back in probably November, December, definitely one before the end of the year. I like to try to stay more on the active side, like maybe once one fight every three or four months. Uh, so hopefully we'll see what Kirk could do. Um, we'll see what the UFC gives us and, uh, hopefully we get a fight either November or December. All right. Now to end things here, there was a big debate on the broadcast between Laura Sanko and Michael Bisbing. They want you to be called Francis Fire Marshall. Is the nickname going to stick number one? Uh, I mean, I think it's going to stick, but I think it's going to be the fire instead of just playing. I think it's the, the, the fire Marshall they're going to be. Okay, the fire marshal, I like that. And then number two, the second part of it, they were debating on who came up with the first. Go ahead, tell everybody, who, who came up with the nickname first? Uh, I, can't, I can't say who came up with it first. I just know uh, Bisbing said it on air first. That's all I heard. But whatever happened behind the scenes, I'm not aware of. <laughs> well, uh, they could uh, continue to debate that one out there. The one last thing I wanted to ask you before we wrap things up uh, on this whole fire marshal thing on a, a whole serious level, 
I mean, that's quite the career, man. It really is. I know I have a, uh, one of my best friends is a full-time firefighter, and you know, you're pretty much putting your life on the line and serious moments there. Just what's the career been like, and how'd you kind of get down that path? It's been good so far. Uh, I can't complain. It's, it's a great job. It's one of the best jobs in the world, I'd say. But uh, I got into that kind of out of high school. I didn't want to go to college. I wasn't really into the school. Um, so it was basically either go to college or, I mean, find a job somewhere else or take the test for the fire department. And I was lucky enough to uh, take the test and, and get on within uh, two years, I think a year and a half after taking the test. So ever since then, I've been fortunate enough to have that in my life and uh, stick with it for now. And of course, uh, former UFC heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic, he's a full-time firefighter out in Cleveland. And he always said that the guys in the fire department always kind of keep them grounded, right? They're always, you know, busting them and doing different pranks. And after he won the heavyweight title, he goes right back to work to making them clean the toilets, kind of bringing them back down to life. Is that what it's like for you too? Yeah, yeah. They always, uh, they never fail to humble you, keep you, uh, keep you in check. It's like, once you go back there, I'm, I'm back to the, the young guy, bottom of the barrel. So... They, uh, they don't have any problem with that. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Francis, it's a pleasure as always, man. Uh, congratulations again. Last thing before you roll out, social media, management, sponsors, anybody got to give a shout out to? Floor is yours, uh, take so- it away. Social media, you can find me on Instagram at Francis Marshall one and my Twitter is uh, Fran Marshall MMA. And then um, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the sponsors that were there for me when I was fighting regionally, helping me out and everything. And then um, also my wrestling coach came out with me to Vegas, Dan O'Cone, and uh, he helped me out a lot. And my boxing coach, Mickey Red, he's, uh, he's helped me to get my hands where they were for that fight. So just with uh, the corner I have, I feel a lot of success coming in the future.